Good evening, and welcome to Old St. Mary's Church as we gather to celebrate the Eucharist on this, the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please take a moment to silence all electronic devices, and let's stand and take a moment to greet one another. All of the readings for this Mass can be found on page 1266 in your hymnal, and the music and readings can be found in this week's worship aid. Feel free to follow along on your phone or device if you'd like on the OSM Parish app, or click the Sunday worship aid link on the front page of our parish website, oldstmarys.com. Our gathering song is number 929, Gather Us In. Number nine, two, nine. Here in this place, new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this space our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken, gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken, we shall arise at the sound of our name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty. Gather us in the proud and the strong. Nourish us well and live the content slowly. Give us the courage to enter the song. Here we will take the wine and the water. Here we will take the bread of new birth. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters. Call us anew to be salt for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion. Give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are true. We gather as brothers and sisters in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We pause for a moment as we do at the beginning of every liturgy. Uh, we ask for God's love and mercy, and pray that God, who is so generous with the largeness of heart uh, that Jesus models for us, that we would be worthy of his love. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy.
in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world have mercy on us you take away the sins of the world receive our prayer you are seated at the right hand of the the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of neighbor, Grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain, to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way, and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Oh, I- 
compassionate to all his creatures. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is near. The Lord is near. The eyes of all look to you. And you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his deeds the lord is close to all who call him who call on him in truth the lord is near to all who A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ, and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner 
who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You too, go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You too, go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers, give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who bore the day's burden and the heat? He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus, the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, that's not fair. Isn't that our natural reaction to Jesus' parable? I think so. Um, think about the hard feelings that could have been avoided, I think, if the landowner, the vineyard owner, would have at least paid the longest working laborers first. Maybe they wouldn't have hung around even to see what the others were getting. Uh, but then Jesus wouldn't have had a story to tell. Right, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Of course, the idea here is God's incredible mercy and generosity. Um, you know, when you do some research about the situation of that time, uh, any worker would have been welcomed uh, to pay, to, to be part of the work. Uh, and also those who were standing in the marketplace weren't lazy do-nothings. The marketplace actually was an equivalent of a, a labor exchange where the workers came with their tools and hoped that they would be hired to feed their families. It was an active kind of waiting for much needed work. And the parable is about those who are willing to be part of the enterprise. That's the story. The last are first, not because of the hours that they worked or the amount of service that they gave, but because of the way they were willing to respond to the invitation. That's what the scholars tell us. So, think about it. Many of us have had experiences in life, in work, where someone else maybe was getting a raise that we had been expecting. Uh, and I think sometimes we channel our inner child who in spite of great, all our, our efforts, we get overlooked. We think about the teacher or the coach who picks some other child first, leaving us behind. Of course, in the modern workforce, this kind of atmosphere in the gospel uh, would only be called toxic, and people would not want to work in that situation. So how are we to relate to this parable, this story that Jesus tells? It certainly challenges expectations, certainly expectations of justice. In situations where we ourselves have felt cheated or overlooked or not compensated for the amount of time that we've put in can cause us to react. 
I was reading something by a Sister Mary McGlone of the Sisters of St. Joseph of Carondelet, and she says here, sometimes we look at religion as a transactional affair, that if we do good, we get rewarded. If not, we'll be punished. Perhaps when we come to Judgment Day, at the end of time, uh, that may happen, where the Lord will make final judgments. But it's bad theology to think that God operates that way during our lifetimes. Ever think of how some people seem to have all their prayers answered, even though their lives aren't quite uh, a paragon of virtue? I don't know if you've ever thought of that. And then we look at our own efforts. We try to live by the rules, doing what is right, and still we are not finding the blessing that some other people seem to be getting. This is where we go in our minds or our hearts. I think of the Emperor Constantine in these situations. In those early centuries of the church, of course, he had a vision of the cross, we're told, uh, that allows him to win a battle at the Milvian Bridge. I've been on the Milvian Bridge in Rome. Uh, and then, as a result of that, he edicts the um, act of toleration for Christians. Doesn't necessarily make them now legal, that happens a little later, but they are not to be persecuted anymore. Of course, he himself, not wanting to change his own lifestyle, you can Google him and find out his situation, waits until his deathbed before he gets baptized. So he could live a wild and woolly life, I guess. I don't know. You have to understand that what Matthew's gospel was written, it was addressing Jewish Christians, those who had thought of themselves as part of the chosen people, and that these other people, the Gentiles who were coming to convert into the faith, now embracing Jesus, are the Johnny-come-latelys, to use modern-day language. Yet Paul advocates that these people should be welcomed without having to first embrace all the demands of Judaism, the dietary laws for the men to be circumcised. No, this is a free gift. God embraces all. Even today, I think there are always still people who think very sadly that they've been a member of a church congregation, for instance, for a long time, or that their family uh, and those of their generation had contributed money to the building of a parish, and that they should have their needs listened to first. That they, I don't know, should dictate even parish policies. This is really bad understanding of church. Uh, it isn't what the gospel message is about. It's not what Jesus preached. Sadly, it was part of the ethos, even in a parish that I grew up in, in New York. Uh, as newer demographics were happening, other kinds of people were moving into the neighborhood, and suddenly people had to deal with that. The Christian mission is to foster Jesus' own understanding of how much God wants us to live in Christ, inviting others constantly to experience God's generosity, God's mercy, so that they can rethink their lives, be converted, and no matter when that happens in their lives. Scriptures always challenge us to think, or rethink, I should say, the attitudes that we have learned in our lives, especially in secular settings. We all know about competition and about um, the first shall be first. <laughs> uh, so it often doesn't compute in our minds. So I think a gospel like today's causes us to pause and do a spiritual assessment about the reality of truth in the mind of God. As churchgoers, we're being reminded, even as we hear Isaiah today, God's thoughts are not our thoughts. God's ways are not our ways. God is a God filled with compassion, filled with mercy. God's generosity is beyond our understanding. God is always inviting. God is God, and we are not. Still, 
We have to constantly be open to the Spirit. Because once you open yourself, no matter who you are and when you come to this point in your life, when you allow God to touch you in some way, hopefully conversion happens. We look at the ways we had been doing things and say, no, I really need to change. I need to do something differently. And then we realize the error of our past ways and we get on board with the Lord. I remember the year that Frank Sinatra died and my mother uh, read about the grand Catholic funeral he was having in Los Angeles. Remember that year? She was a little miffed, I'd say. And it's true. I read a, a biography about Frank Sinatra. Uh, for all of his talent, and I really love Sinatra's music, uh, and for all of the stardom in his life, as many other prominent figures, his life was much less exemplary as a Christian. Uh, frankly, he was quite misogynistic in the way he dealt with the women in his life. Uh, so I told her, though, I said, you know what? God is the only one who knows the whole story, and at least he's come back to the church. We should be thankful for that, even if it was his later years. I think he was channeling Constantine. <laughs> God's timing is different from our own. God has a bigger view of life, and our response must simply be a readiness to, to make an answer so that we can also show that for others. The invitation is always there, always awaiting a response, and as we see our lives, if you want to borrow the metaphor, laboring in the vineyard of the kingdom, we should then begin to discover opportunities to make a difference in the world, to allow people to experience the power of God's truth and love, and to allow people to experience the power of forgiveness, as well as to offer an alternative way to approach life, one that radiates honesty, and the kind of love that remains true even in difficult circumstances. That's what conversion is about. But no matter when we come to God, we have to remember the God that we believe in is always generous. It's the very reason why Jesus walked the face of this earth, to set us free, to redeem us. It's why he died, it's why he rose again. Whenever we feel like we haven't done enough, uh, or if we feel less than compared to other people who seem to be holier, we should always remember this. God invites us to always do more so that we can also invite others to celebrate with us and that they would have a way of re responding when they feel God's invitation. All are called to the enterprise, the great work of God's love for all of humanity. proclaim as we believe and we continue to pray as we have been the ancient Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate he was crucified died and was buried he descended into hell on the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. 
In the responsorial psalm today, we're reminded that God is near to all who call upon him. So in prayer, we now turn to our generous and loving God. Grant that Pope Francis, Cardinal Supich, and all church leaders will be signs of God's loving presence among us and lead our global community in the way of peace, we pray. That world leaders will work tirelessly to bring justice and relief to those who suffer, especially those who have been forced to flee their homelands, we pray. Loving God, you call all who believe in you to grow perfect in love by following in the footsteps of Jesus, your Son. Call from among us more men and women to serve you in your church, we pray. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, homes, and livelihood to earthquake, storm, and fire. Grant protection to those who have come to their aid, we pray that the sick will know recovery and relief from pain, we pray. That all those who have died, especially Matt Schoberly, will be welcomed into the everlasting peace of heaven, we pray. May all the prayers of this faith community be united with the prayers of the Universal Church. We pray. O God of boundless love and mercy, hear and listen to the prayers of your people. And we make our prayers in the name of Jesus the Christ, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. As we take up the offering, uh, as I say all the time, please realize how critical this is so that we can be here uh, in the South Loop. Um, thank you for your financial support, your generosity, that we can continue the ministries here uh, and all the salaries that need to be paid, et cetera, et cetera. Um, for those who are joining with us online, uh, always you can mail your contributions to the parish office or you can donate online simply by clicking on the Give button on the parish website, oldstmarys.com. Uh, Thank you so much for your generosity. You make it happen. As our gifts are prepared, let us sing number 758, Lord of All Hopefulness, number 758. Oh, 
of all gentleness, Lord of all calm, whose voice is contentment, whose presence is balm. Be there at our sleeping and give us, we pray, your peace in our hearts, Lord, at the end of the day. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable before our loving God and merciful Father. Lord, receive with fervor the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ Jesus our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord God of heaven and earth, through Christ Jesus our Lord. For by your word you created the world, you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as our mediator, and he has spoken your words to us, and has called us to follow him. Jesus is the way that leads to you. He is the truth that sets us free. Jesus is the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather those whom you have made for the glory of your name, all men and women, into one family, redeemed by the blood of the cross, signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels and saints, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name You are indeed holy to be glorified, O God, for you love the human race. You always walk with us on this journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we pray, send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread, he said the blessing, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life, the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ handed on to us. Grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this sacred mystery, Almighty God, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the glorious bond of communion that we share together with Francis, our Pope, with Blaise, our Bishop, the entire order of bishops throughout the world, with the clergy, those in religious life, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves in service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all people, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and their hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and walk with them along the way of your kingdom. We pray for our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, especially Matthew Schoberly. We remember all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the glory of the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when this our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to the eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the saints, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Holy Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Holy Apostles, the martyrs, and with all of the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We turn to one another and offer some sign of Christ's peace. Take off.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us sing our communion hymn number 1032, All Who Hunger, number 1032.
Graciously raise up, Lord, those who you feed and renew in this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ Jesus our Lord. The announcements for this week. Um, as always, we thank you for having been here with us, especially those who are able to be with us in person. Uh, and if you're joining us online, uh, if you're homebound, we continue to pray for you. If you can uh, come to be with us in person, uh, that's the ideal. That's what church is about, being in community together with one another. As always, do take and read a copy of the week's bulletin. There's information also available on the parish website and if you have the OSM Parish app. Remember that next Saturday evening is the annual Oktoberfest event as we get ready for October. I can't believe September is almost over. Uh, as a result, the Michigan Avenue parking lot, which is right immediately next to the church, will be unavailable for the 5 p.m. Mass next Saturday. But you can still park in the Wabash lot behind the church. Both of those lots, of course, will be available the next day on the Sunday. Um, uh, note that the Sunday evening Mass uh, has returned, but it has a different time than you may have been used to. It is not at 6, but it is at 4 p.m. in the later afternoon. Uh, to be able to bring service to that Mass, we need lectors. We need those who will be extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion. We need ushers. We need altar service. They're all needed for that Mass. So if you or your family may be coming, please uh, consider serving at uh, that Mass or any of the weekend Masses, for that matter. Um, see our music director, Scott Williams, uh, to volunteer uh, or have information about any of these liturgical church ministries. As we always do, weekend after weekend, are there any visitors with us today? Would you be willing to stand that we could just welcome you in a special way? Thanks for being here, whatever brings you into town, or to be with us this evening. Uh, I understand there's a Notre Dame game tonight and we have to get out of here. <laughs> I was just, I'm just saying. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God be with you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go to live in the vineyard, to serve in the vineyard of the Lord. As we go forth, let us sing number 728, Canticle of the Turning, number 728. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings on the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You have fixed your sight on your servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, could the world be about to turn. My heart shall sing on the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though I am small, my God, my all, you will work great things in me. Your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame and to those who would for you yearn. You will show your might, put the strong to fight, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. 
Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. From the halls of power to the fortress tower, not a stone will be left on stone. Let the king beware, for your justice tears every tyrant from his throne. The hungry poor shall weep no more For the food they can never earn There are tables spread, every mouth be fed For the world is about to turn My heart shall sing of the day you bring Let the fires of your justice burn Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near And the world is about to Pick them all apart there. As long as you bring them back, I don't care. 